Recording has begun. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Today is the 10th of October 2023. And my name is Shazza Hussain. And I live at Primary Bay, number 20, at the bottom. And today has been 64 days since my brother Talib has been abducted and kidnapped from my care and is being held in detention under, under God knows what circumstances because they simply won't tell me anything about him. On the 8th of August I was arrested from my home, from my care home, as you can see it's all falling apart now. I had made all these dreams and ambitions. This is a care home for my brother, solely catered for my brother, customised for his needs. And I told the local authority I'm charging you a million pound a week for providing care to my brother, which you have a duty of legal duty of care to under the Mental Health Act 9, 1983 section 117, as a result of which the local my, my dispute with the local authority began and continues to exist. And as a result of this, they've come and kidnapped my brother, uh, took, arrested me falsely, released me on bail, saying I can't see him anymore, and now they won't tell me where he is. And at the same time, this was all done because, in parallel, the local authority have been instructing Manningham Housing Association, which is their proxy agent. Basically, everybody's their proxy agent. Everybody just uh, gets into line and uh, uh, does exactly what the local authority want, and the local authority are all-powerful and... Uh, yeah, even the police force. Obviously, I got arrested. I was at home. I didn't. Nobody complained. They complained. The council complained to the police to come and arrest me. Then abduct me, search the houses, have kidnapped my brother, taken his passport, taken taken all his identity, um, but not take his clothes uh, and any of those other assets. And basically, made them. The, my brother Talib has now become the private property of the local authority, considering that they've been attempting to uh, make him their private property for uh, for the last five years or more. And it's simply because he had, has ongoing care needs that they cannot meet and I charge a million pound a week and they can't stand that and uh, so as a result of which they now need to not only commission the services of uh, um, the police but also primarily what the problem has been because look what, the, what can the police do? The police can just come and arrest me. Once they arrest me they have to charge me. Once they charge me they have to then prosecute me. And once they have to prosecute me he has to go to an independent public body which is a, a public prosecutor and then there has to be evidence and then there has to be like a jury and it's a long-winded process to convict me uh, and so rather than doing going the long route <coughs> they sidestep the involvement of the pre police just simply get you to the court under some pretext and then they uh, utilize the contempt of court uh, uh, directives to get you into prison through an uh, indirect mean um, so they've got all these little tricks. The systems that they create are their systems. You've got to understand, anybody that has a, creates a system, they create back doors, hacks and cracks in the system that they exploit for their own personal benefit. Back door, back door hacks and cracks and cheat codes that they utilise. Um, they necessarily create those uh, cheat codes for their own benefit because they don't, like any laws that they create, like for example the laws, they create laws for everybody else to follow and that yet they have means, ways and means to override the very laws so that they can achieve a competitive advantage. And that's how you win. That's how losers ultimately win. <coughs> the losers who know that they're not good at anything, what they say is that, look, everybody play by these rules and yet, so get everybody to insist on playing by those rules, penalise and punish anybody who does not abide by the rules, but then break the rules yourself knowing the fact that you cannot be penalised and that's the situation with, with the police and the local authority and uh, more importantly the judges and um, look I've spent all day today writing another application as a result of what happened yesterday in court and what happened ultimately is that after the event like when, you, when you're at it you don't realise what's going on because you're just not naive but you, you just allow the process to happen it's only retrospectively when you think well wait on a minute that was not right um, why did they not ask this question? Why did they not? Why didn't they do it that way for? It's only retrospectively now, a year, you know, a day later that I see that. Oh, wait on a minute! This was a clear mess up. They messed up yesterday, and now what they're trying to do is they're just trying to retrospectively trying to fix things for their own benefit. Yeah, it's um, 
It's been a long day today. I've just been writing letters, uh, analysing what happened today in court. Um, but it ultimately, the problem remains is that once you realise that the courts and the, the courts are corrupt and the judges are malevolent and paid off and uh, working for the best interests of the authorities, very little you can do in order to. Very little you can do. Where do you go? You can't go to the police. You can't go to anybody. The bottom line remains that uh, once the courts are involved and the judges are being bought off, very little that you can do now. It's been 64 days. I have absolutely no idea where my brother is. 64 days later, how, just imagine how somebody, how a normal person would feel being like uh, taken away from your home, from your family, uh, and not having any access and not being able to speak English. A normal person would have a mental breakdown. I'm clearly having a mental breakdown a part, a part way. I mean, I'm obviously trying to cope, but it's psychologically torturous for me. How do you think my brother feels? My brother, I know last time they abducted him five years ago, he was terrorized. Completely saying, brother, don't leave me here. I want to go home. And now they've done the same thing a second time. They've kidnapped my brother, a, a, a grown adult who has mental capacity, and forcing the, the narrative through simply because I've ensured that he has, a, you know, he's valuable and he's worth over a quarter of a million pounds, which they now have abducted. And the only different thing today was that I was speaking to, I spoke to Mr. Graham Kenner, the solicitor, who slammed the phone upon me, who's refusing. They're all just refusing to speak to me. How can this be? All I want to do is talk to them. I'm not being a violent or aggressive to them. I'm not threatening anybody. All I just want is answers. How, what legal framework have you used to abduct my brother? And nobody seems to be able to give me that simple answer. Simply avoid him. Don't talk to him. We'll go to the courts. We'll rush something through. We'll get an order through. You know, right, childish. You know, they are, you know a local authority. This is probably the fourth largest local authority in uh, the UK. And the way they act and behave are quite imbecilic little children. Slamming the phone. Oh, don't talk to him. Hide, hide, hide. You're paid at public expense to do your job, which you've been failing to do. And I've caught you upon it. And I'm bringing you to a, a, account upon it. That look, you failed upon these aspects. You failed in adult social care. My, my, you failed my family members. You failed to ma manage for public funds. And I'm holding to account as a, as a citizen should. And yet they are acting with complete childish, imbecilic, idiotic behaviour that is as and, and uh, deplorable and it's just surprising me that you know they I would act and behave in this way they're all no no Mr. Hussain's doing that you know just playing like lies just their they economy because they can't do their jobs is based on lies and deception and it's not just that the, uh, the counsellors or social workers or professionals are lying always the judges don't want to hear anything but lies they just want to hear falsehoods if you like I've, I've attended court several times now the judges don't, don't care about the truth the truth is not uh, financially advantageous to them because the truth means that they're servants and they have to act and behave like servants. So what they try to do is they try to create narratives and uh, try to create falsehoods that uh, gives them authority. Or oh, Mr. Hussain was trying. To, I mean, literally, the reason that they come on, come and arrested me when I later found out in the police interview was uh, the social workers that said, were claiming that I'd killed my brother and they were worried he was dead when they saw him in the car. It's absolutely asinine and ridiculous, uh, the little games that they choose to play with me uh, in order to get an advantage. Absolutely ridiculous. So let's just end it there. So today was just simply uh, writing uh, court letters, uh, trying to undo what they've done, but it's all the same. It's all just bullshit regarding the authorities. They all lie, cheat and manipulate, work together in order to, uh, you know, target me. And they're holding my brother hostage now and getting me to dance their tune in order to exploit my privacy, my, my labour, my rights, so they can just simply get an advantage over me. Simply horrendous, simply ridiculous. And just one last thing. Yeah, I'm not suicidal. I'm not going to kill myself. I'm going to do something so stupid. And uh, if I die, it's only as a result of the local authority, whether directly or indirectly, commissioning harm or d uh, upon myself. Uh, and uh, I live in fear of my life, and that's hence why I'm making these recordings. I think that's all for today.